In this episode, I'll show you how to get great sounding audio for your videos. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV, brought to you by the best camera store in the world, it's Adorama. You can check them out at adorama.com. Well, hey, I'm Mark Wallace, and I'm here on a very, very busy and noisy street corner in Cartagena, Colombia. And I chose this street corner because it's really noisy. There are horns and sirens and buses and motorcycles and brakes and all kinds of things going on here. And I wanted to show you how you can get clean audio in your videos. I know a lot of you shoot videos on a DSLR or a normal video camera like I'm using right now. I'm using a Canon Vixia HFG20. And you've written to me and said, hey, how do you get clean audio in your videos? Well, let me first let you hear what this sounds like without my external microphone. As you can hear, it is noisy. To get this right, what you need is an external mic. Ah, it sounds so much better when I have the external mic turned on. Now, in the past, I've always recommended wireless mics, the Evolution G3's uh, series of microphones. Now, the problem with those is that, well, they're expensive. They're about $600, and if you're using an older DSLR camera, sometimes you need a little preamp, and there's some things that go along with that, and you have to know about setting channels, and there can be radio frequency issues, all kinds of things. And so there is an easier solution. It takes a little bit more work in post-production, but it's a little trick that I picked up from my friend Gavin Hoey, this is how he does it, or at least how he did it when I visited him in London in 2013. I am using a Zoom H1 external recorder right here. This guy is 99 bucks. It's only $100 for this little recorder. And I'm using a Rode lavalier mic. It's about $200. So this is about $300 altogether. And then I bought a little windscreen, this little sock right here, this little fuzzy guy. That knocks out all the wind noise if you're in a really, really windy location. And so I think that was about $30. So very inexpensive solution. And so the way to do this is once you start your video, you start your external recorder and then you just sync them in post-production. Now there's a couple things you need to do on your external recorder to make sure this all works right. So what I did is I needed to make sure I set this up to the right file format and the right file recording uh, size. And so I've set this up to record in WAV file format, W-A-V, using little switches on the back. And I've set this to a 48 kilohertz, 24-bit recording format. Now, if you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you set up your audio recording device to 48 bits, I mean 48 kilohertz, 24 bits, and that way it'll match the waveform on your video camera. Now, normally I would have this microphone all hidden under my shirt, but because we're showing you how this do, uh, works, I'm just letting it all hang out. Now, once you have this all done, what you need to do is to sync everything in post-production. Now, to sync everything up, what you need to do is make sure you give yourself some markers. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a little white flash and then I'm gonna walk you through this and you're gonna see this real time, how this works. All right, so what I've done here is I've started my external uh, video recorder. It's going right now and now I will record, I will start my recorder here. Now this is recording and now I will clap three times. And that will allow me to sync the audio. And now you can hear, oh, it's so much better because I'm able to sync my external recorder to the video that's happening. That's the key, is to make sure you uh, clap three times because that will give you a marker to match up those waveforms in post-production. Now, if you're using Adobe Premiere CC 2014, there's a feature that does all of this for you automatically. I'll show you that first, and then I'll show you how to do it uh, manually if you're using something else uh, besides the latest version of Premiere, maybe iMovie or something like that. It's really simple, so let's jump over into post-production, and I'll show you how it works. This is Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2014, the latest version as of this video. Let me show you how I have my project set up here. I've got this video files folder and I've got three uh, video files like opening and closing in the demo. This demo is what we I just showed you, so I'll play that. All right, so what I've done here is I've started my external uh, video recorder. It's going... And you can see that's horrible audio there. If you fast forward, you can see where I clap. There's the claps right there. Okay, that's gonna come into play here in a second. Really, really important. Now down here I have my audio files, and again I have closing and opening and demo. I just imported the WAV files from my Zoom, and then I renamed those based on the content. So I know this is the demo because when I open it, I will start my recorder here. Now I can listen to this and it matches the demo. Now what I really want to do here is show you this little section right here. I'll zoom in. You can see on the waveform, we have these three spikes. Those are the claps. So if I zip back here, you can hear it. 
Those claps are good because they give us a visual marker on our waveform exactly where things should line up. All right, let's go back to our demo. This is our video file. Well, if we change this from just the composite video to the waveform, so we want to see the audio waveform of the video. And if I zoom in to that, look at there. We have one, two, three spikes just like we did before. Why three? Well, sometimes you've got noise in there. So you can see here I'm talking, so there's a little bit of noise. And over here, a truck drove by. And so if I only had one clap, I might not have a good, clean uh, spike. And so you can listen to that. Yeah, so that end one there, if I only had that one spike, it might not be good enough. All right, let's do this the easy way. Now, when we do this manually, we're going to manually uh, line up these spikes here using markers, but we don't have to do that in the new version of Adobe Premiere Pro. What we can do is we can click on the demo audio uh, file and then command or control click on the demo wave file, the audio file there. So video, audio, right click, and then I'm going to choose merge clips. This is the beautiful thing. I'll just click merge clips. I get this little merge clips dialog box that shows up here. And I'm going to call this Mark's merged clip, just so we have something there that makes sense. Now, it's going to ask us, what do we use to synchronize this? Now, in the olden times, back before this latest version, you would have to actually put markers in here and say, hey, use an in point or an out point or some kind of marker here. But now we can just use the audio. So we're using channel one of the video file, and then we're using the audio of the demo wave, and it's going to automatically analyze these waveforms and match everything up for us. And then I've also said, hey, remove this audio from the AV clip. In other words, I don't want the audio from the video file because it's rubbish. We want the clean audio from the H1. So remove this bad audio and just use the good video and the good audio all synced up. Now all I have to do is hit OK, and this, bam, just like that. Mark's merge clip shows up. I'll open that. I'm going to fast forward this over here to where I'm clapping. And look, you can hear clean audio all lined up correctly. And now I will clap three times, and that will allow me to sync the audio. And That's the easiest way to do it. When you have that done, then you just drag that onto your timeline, and everything's good to go. Now, you might see something like this where we have a little overhang here. Well, that's when uh, I was recording on my video camera, but not yet on my audio device. So there's no audio to sync there because it didn't exist yet until I pressed record on my H1. I will start my recorder. And so you might have to trim that up using the razor blade and getting rid of that extra little rubbish there at the beginning and maybe trim that up and get rid of the little extra rubbish at the end as well. Just something to note. All right, so how do we do this manually? Maybe you don't have the latest version of Premiere Pro or maybe you're using a different application. Well, it's quite easy to do this. So I'm going to open up my, uh, my video file. And remember here, I've changed this to look, instead of looking at the video part of this, I've changed this to look at the audio portion. And I've got three little uh, spikes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to use my left and right arrow to go one frame at a time. I'm going to find that first little spike there. And I'm going to hit M for mark. So I'm going to add a marker. We get this little uh, marker right there. Then I'm going to zip over here to the next little marker. There it is. And then to that one. So I've got three markers. One, two, three. Then I'm going to go over here to my demo wave and do the exact same thing. There's a marker. All right, so I've got three markers. Then what I can do here is I can take my demo, um, and this is, again, my uh, demo video. So I'll go back to video. And what I could do is I could go to the first marker and set an endpoint. That's easy. But we're going to do it just the sort of long way here. So I'll throw this on the timeline. And then I'm going to zoom way in here. And here are my three little markers. I've zoomed way in on this. I've got three little markers here. One, two, three. Then I'm going to take my demo wave file, and I will drag that to a new uh, little uh, track on the timeline. And what I'll need to do is I just need to line up those markers. So I'm going to drag this around until those line up. So I see these three markers down here. 
I'll zoom out just a bit, trim this up just a bit so we're a little bit better off here. So I'm just going to drag this over. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Now we see, if I zoom in, those three markers are all lined up. And now I will mute the audio from my video file. So I've clicked this little M here to mute it. And then we'll... And that will allow me to sync the audio. And now you can hear, oh, it's so much better. So you can see it's all lined up. That's all there is to it. And if I unmute this, you can hear all of it together. Better because I'm able to sync my external recorder. Super, super easy. So either use the audio, uh, the, the combined clips, which is the easiest way. Just right click and say combine clips or set markers and align everything manually. Either way, you're going to get great sounding audio to go with your videos. All right. Using this technique, you can really clean up your audio. In fact, here's a clip from last week's video where I was on a mountain. It was super windy and you can see here what it sounds like without an external microphone. Obviously that's no good. I recorded on my H1 and here is what it sounded like with those two clips combined. The wind is blowing so hard, I can't stay on my feet. What a difference that makes. It is a huge, huge difference. And for only $300, why not do this? This works for anything. And because it's not a wireless system, you can use this for weddings, you can put this on a groom or maybe the uh, preacher that's doing the ceremony. You can 